3, Kenny Pickett and company, and so much more. Jerry DePaula joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Is Pitt about where you thought they should be, Jerry? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't think they're a top 10 team, not yet. And uh, I think they have a chance to be. Uh, it's, it's sitting right there for them. If they can knock off West Virginia and Tennessee uh, to open the season, it's the first time since 1986 Pitt is opening up with two Power 5 teams at the at the beginning of their schedule. So there's the opportunity to be really good this year. I mean, whether they do it or not, a lot's going to depend on the new quarterback. A lot's going to depend on these wide receivers and how much of a uh, gap is going to be between what Jordan Addison did and what these guys are going to do this year. You know, you know, Pat Narduzzi was very, very active in the transfer portal. I mean, he, he took a hit with well, Addison going to USC, but he also picked up Bob Means from Louisiana Tech. I, I talk about these guys like they're free agents and what, what they actually are. They yeah. literally are free agents. And the Canada Mumfield, freshman All-American from Akron, uh, has done a really good job at camp uh, so far this summer. So, uh, And, of course, that defensive line, they're talking about it being one of the best in the country. And Kalijah Canty in the middle of it is it's one of the best tackles in the country. And uh, Habakkuk Baldwin Auto is probably going to be a, a high NFL draft pick next spring. It depends on end. So they, they got a chance to be, to be good. They have talent. He's recruited very well, and they're older, too. That's one thing you don't see a lot in college football. It, we see it more now because of the, the, the bonus COVID year. But everyone on the offensive line is 20, 23 years going on 24, uh, all five starters. And, you know, that makes a big difference. When you're 23 and a half and you're going against 18 and 19-year-olds, you know, you can, you can blow, up a lot, blow open a lot of holes in that line just because of your physical strength and maturity. So uh, Pitt, there's a lot of expectations on Pitt this year, a lot of expectations. And people are going to be really disappointed if they end up with um, another 8-4 and four or 7-5 and five season. Uh, but uh, the optimists in, in uh, some of these fans have them, you know, winning the Coastal Championship again. And uh, it all comes down probably to that last game of the season uh, against Miami two days after Thanksgiving in, in Coral Gables. How do you feel the transition from Mark Whipple, who left to go to Nebraska, is going uh, on the offense, and especially you know with the new quarterback in, in Slovis? I think it's going well. Uh, I, I, I think Pat Narduzzi, you know, was, was willing to uh, you know let Mark Whipple hand the the keys to the, the, the Cadillac to, to Kenny Pickett and Jordan Addison just because of who they are. They were of course all American talent, uh, and they passed the ball you know a little bit more than they threw it last year. Or than they ran it last year. This year it's going to be flipped a little bit, and you're going to you see them, you know, running the ball a lot more. Not just at the end of the end of the, in the fourth quarter, but uh, they're going to be running running to set up to pass rather than pass to set up to run. And they got, like I said, a four or five starting offensive line returning returning from last year, and three running backs returning from last year. Is he a Kanda, Rodney Hammond Jr., and and Vincent Davis, who's been around for a long time? Remember him from two years ago when he ran for over 200 yards against Georgia Tech. Yeah, in the finale of the 2020 season. So uh, they got a lot of experienced guys on hand. And, uh, you know, they're 11-3 and three last year. People are going to expect the same thing this year. But I think the, the Coastal was a lot better. Miami is a lot better. Pitt lost to Miami last year. You know, so uh, you know, that was on that was at home, too. So now i got to go down there to play them. And, and Pitt doesn't normally, it traditionally, doesn't play well against Miami. And that, that'll be the team, the, the team they have to beat. But the other thing about the, the the second half of that of pit season, four of the last six games were on the road. Uh, you know that's that's almost unheard of. You know you play all your home games early and that's good. Uh, but when when it's right cutting time and you really have to start winning games, you got to do it on the road. Virginia, North Carolina, Miami, very Louisville, very difficult games. Uh, they they have to win if they want to get to where they want to go. And they're talking national championship. And then they're just not talking ACC championship. You talk to the players; they think they can win the national championship. But when they break down before practice they, they huddle up in, in the middle of the field before practice and instead of saying ACC champs like they used to it's national champions and they, they mean it too so for a team with such high expectations uh, it looks like we'll learn quite a bit in those first couple of weeks huh? how about the backyard brawl back for the first time in over a decade in Tennessee right after that first things first uh, how are the thoughts surrounding uh, uh, getting back together with the uh, Mountaineers for the old backyard brawl well I, I think the players are, are starting to they learn about the rivalry. I mean, they haven't played since 2011, uh, and that was about 11 years ago. And so these guys were uh, in middle school, uh, you know, in, in somewhere else. And a lot of them, somewhere else other than Pittsburgh or West Virginia, were the last time these two teams played. And uh, they're getting that, they're getting a little sense of it, I'm sure. And the fans are more into it than anybody else. The games are already sold out. Right. Uh, they're expecting 70,000 people at Acu Shore Stadium, formerly Heinz Field. 
uh, yes. for that game. And, and uh, uh, in West Virginia, you know, in, in, interesting storyline is JT Daniels, quarterback from uh, uh, USC, transferred from USC to West Virginia. Uh, just mm-hmm. like Keaton Slovis transferred from USC to Pitt. Uh, those guys were teammates for a while in, in, the, in the West Coast. So, uh, and the offensive coordinator, Grant Harrell, uh, is, is a former West Virginia offensive coordinator, is a former OC, OC at USC. So, you know, there's a lot of storylines that are being cooked up in this game. And, uh, yeah, to me, to me, you know, with the, all the expectations and all the ambitious goals this team has set for itself, the game is almost a must win. And Tennessee after that is the same thing. Uh, if you want to be national champions and you want to be you know, contending, uh, you, you know, to be a top, top five team, you know, this season, you got to win those two games. I mean, they're good teams. They're not the best teams in the Big 12 or the SEC, but they're good teams, and they're, they would be impressive victories if, if they can get them. If they don't get them, then uh, fans are just going to realize, well, or people around the country just realize, well, it's just another 7-5, and 8-4 and four pick team. How sad, how sad, and how many times do you have to catch yourself? Because you did a great job mentioning the new stadium, the name of it, and then saying formerly Heinz Field. <laughs> well, when I write it, uh, I, I, I pretty much caught in that dot pat. Trying to get the spelling is what I first to get the spelling down. Once I got the spelling down, then I, I started you know, thinking about it. I haven't been in the in AccuSure Stadium and, and since it's been called AccuSure Stadium. Uh, you know, so I, I think that uh, it's not a big problem for me. Uh, but a lot of people are still going to call it Heinz Field. You know, in, in the catcher bottle, uh, which used to be in, in the one end zone, every anytime. Uh, Pitt or the Steelers would get into the red zone inside the 20 yard line. Uh, the red, big red ketchup bottles would light up. Uh, they, they took those ketchup bottles and took them away from the field and put them somewhere in the stadium. I'm not sure where. They do have some kind of a, a financial deal with Hines. Uh, just not like they have with AccuSure. I think AccuSure is paying 15 million or 10 million maybe for the next 15 years, which is what makes that 150 million. Hines is only paying 57 million. So it's a big, big change for the Steelers. And the pitch is going right along with it. Yeah, I'd take those ketchup bottles down too. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jerry DePaul, a Pittsburgh Tribune review, uh, and uh, talking pit football, and also lately the name change of Heinz, Heinz Field, which, uh, again, I, you have to, right? I mean, if you're the name, you want yeah. the name. You want, yeah. you want to be represented. The running back, and I was asked by Chris uh, Abana. Kanda, is that right? Or how do you say his last name? Izzy, 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 Izzy. Abana, Izzy, Izzy Israel actually, Israel Abana Kanda. Yeah, they call him Izzy, Izzy Abana. Kanda. How how uh, were the expectations? He, he was asking, is he getting it over twelve hundred yards rushing? You know, obviously expectations <laughs> for him. Your thoughts about him? Well, he's a he's a hard runner. He has a lot of speed. Uh, he, they, 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 they talk about his speed a lot. In fact, he's a, he's a kickoff returner. He's returned kickoffs for a bit. I think he had one for a touchdown last year. Uh, he is, I, I really think that he's. Uh, a guy that's going to be their number one back. But as far as getting 1,200 yards, that would pretty much double what he had last year. But like those other two guys, Hammond uh, and Davis, are, are going to get their carries too. Uh, and, and, of course, they're going to have to you know throw the ball some too. So I doubt he'll get 1,200 yards. But I can see him getting 1,000, 900 to 1,000 yards if he stays healthy. He's had some problems staying healthy, actually. He got hurt in the bowl game uh, against uh, in Michigan State, Pete's Bowl, and uh, missed a good part of that game. So uh, – if he stays healthy, he has a chance to have a big season. He's big. He's a solid guy. He looks like an NFL running back. He does have. He has that look with the broad shoulders and the big thighs. Uh, so I, he's primed to have a good season. But everybody here in, 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 on Pitt's team in that in that locker room seems to be primed to have a good season. But uh, a lot of us are just waiting. We want to. We want to see it first. They're really front loaded on home games early in the year. Do you think that will help them build that role? Yeah, I think it's nice being home early. Uh, it, it really is. They got to go to Western Michigan though. In, in the uh, what, third game of the season, maybe uh, that's the team that beat them last year at, at Heinz Field, and that was a high scoring game. You know, the defense has everybody back, but they had two really bad hiccups last year. Uh, they, they hiccuped up against West, West Western Michigan. They hiccuped against Miami, giving up a total of eighty two points in those games. In um, both of those teams, now they beat them at Heinz Field. Now they got to go on the road to play those teams. Uh, but it's nice, you know, those first two games at home might make it easier to win those two games. Like I said, they're must wins. They're home games. They're home games against Power Five teams. They're, they're tone setters for the season. And, you know, in the, you set a tone whether you win or you lose. You set a good tone if you win. You set a sour tone if you lose. And uh, that, that's why those games are so important. But having them at home is, is a little bit of an advantage. But, uh, you know, Pitt has lost some big games at home before. And, like I said, they lost two of them last year at home. 
So, Jerry, uh, has the Jordan Addison whatever, hate, uh, dislike, ha- however you want to phrase it, has that kind of cooled off uh, over the last few months since he made his decision? Well, I think hate is kind of the wrong word. I, I, Pitt fans, you know, are, are probably disgruntled and disappointed and, sure. you know, didn't like it that he was chasing the money. Uh, but when the players, we talked to the players, and, you know, of course they're going to be a PC and say the right thing. They, they, they said, hey, you know, he, he did what is best for him and his family. We don't begrudge him anything. He played for us for two years. He did a great job. You know, Pitt wouldn't have been ACC champions last year without Jordan Addison. Uh, you know, they, they, they won 11 games last year, but they won a lot of close games last right. year. And, and that was the, the North Carolina game comes to mind. That was an overtime. The Virginia game where he made that catch at the end of the game, uh, the seal of the victory. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody hates Jordan because he had a lot of friends in the locker room. Uh, he wasn't exactly a team leader. He was only a sophomore at the time. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's cooled off, and, and Pitt has moved on. Like I said, they have an, other receivers who they think maybe they weren't as talented as Jordan Addison, but they could be nearly as productive, some of them anyway. Yeah, I guess the hate would be more towards the situation, not the player, but the situation of just that that's, right. that's yeah. allowed to happen nowadays. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's an NIL thing where, where guys can you know get enticed uh, as, as they're being wooed uh, you know, to go either transfer or to be coming out of high school. It, this is what college sports was all about, but it's what it's all about now. And you just got to live with it. Jerry, I know everyone might have a separate opinion on this, whether it's West Virginia or Pitt fans, but they played forever, over, a, what, 100 times. There was the hiatus when Pitt left the Big East and joined the ACC, and then West Virginia soon after that, of course, was a part of the Big 12. They didn't play for a long, long time. They announced that they would start playing again a few years back. Why did they not figure out a way to play during the hiatus? <laughs> well, you, you know, Pitt, the Big 12, I guess, only has uh, three non-conference games. Right. If I might, yeah. Now, the ACC has four. So it's a little easier for Pitt. And, you know, Pitt was always trying to – has been trying to play Penn State, you know, after the, that series ended in 2019. Uh, but the Big 10 only has three non-conference games. That's part of it. And you know, the Pitt-Penn State thing, I don't think Penn State wants to play Pitt, you know, they may even if they had 12 non-conference games. Uh, the Pitt-West Virginia thing sort of died down because – they, they go, you go to different conferences and, and you're in a new conference and you try to set yourself up to, be, to do what's best uh, for your program. Uh, but I'm glad that, the, you know, smart people got together and decided, you know, put, put this thing back together. Now they're going to play eight times in the next 11 seasons. They should play every year like they used to. I mean, Pitt used to play West Virginia and Pitt every year. Um, but I, in my lifetime, I, I'm 68 years old. I don't think I'm going to see another Pitt-Penn State game. But it's as nice as it's going to be eight Pitt West Virginia games in the next 11 years. And uh, I think that the uh, relationship will continue and they'll keep playing, you know, into the next decade, too. Jerry, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh Tribune Review on Pittsburgh. We mentioned the AP Top 